Hello, my friends, and welcome to the season premiere of Hoarders. I mean, we're, we're doing a Destiny Vault video, so let's go. I've been a year one player in Destiny, and I've pretty much kept everything that is fun to use in PvP. Guardian. So therefore, my Please. vault is stacked, doesn't really have any places left. So I started hoarding my Postmaster as well, just a little bit. So without further ado, let's begin this vault video. You see, we got a lot of stuff to go through. Let's start at the top. We got Her Benevolence. You can get this from Prison of Elders, and I rerolled mine for Replenish, Snapshot, Clown Cartridge, and of course, my Taxis Scope, because it resembles the Icebreaker Scope. I use Icebreaker a lot. Um, this is nice because this is one of the few snipers that can get Replenish on it, and have enough impact to kill supers if they have low armor, because they nerfed this sniper at some point. I don't use this as much because of the nerf, but I'm not deleting it because it's one of the few rerollable snipers I own. Next up, Spare Change. Now I used to have a different version of this, and I even have another one in the Postmaster, but I opted for Glass Half Full just to make two bursts more consistent. Um, even with a consistent two burst, I still can't see myself using it over Clever Dragon if I want to win because Clever Dragon and Grasp of My Lock are so forgiving. Suro's Regime, we already know about this one. I'm probably not going to talk about exotics, but it's cool because I have the original version and I can compare it later. If you notice that this Suro's Regime does not have high caliber rounds, but the old Suro's Regime does. Not to mention, um, people used to keep old Suros and uh, not level up any of the perks because the naked auto rifle, like with only linear compensator or smart drift, you don't level up focus fire. If you had a gun like that, it would actually have a fast as hell time to kill, but then you couldn't take the Suros perk or high caliber rounds. But this new Suros, you get the best of both worlds because you can have hammer forged or lightweight with spinning up which is pretty much better than a naked Suros. Next up Vision Stone from Trials. I can't say I've really done anything with this auto rifle. I know Invicta did a review of it at some point if you want to check that out but for now it just sits in my vault because I'm probably not going to be able to obtain one of these in future Destiny content releases. Burning Eye I've heard good things about it, I haven't really used it. I'll level it up if, it, if I ever roll it on the random rumble generator. For now, I've owned enough scouts with this rate of fire impact to tell you that it's pretty good. Now we're finally at the Suros. If you notice, it has high caliber rounds, and this is pretty much the only way I run it, using the cool guy Suros regime trick of just tapping R and firing uh, semi-auto, and it shoots slightly faster than the full auto. Don't know if I explained that well, but this is live commentary, so you'll forgive me. Chaperone, self-explanatory. Red Death, self-explanatory. And look, probably one of the rarest guns in Destiny. Her right hand. For those of you who don't know, in year one, there was a Queen's Wrath event, where you could do these special quests and side missions that rewarded you these weapons, and it was only for like a week or two. So, this is a blue auto rifle. No one kept blues back then, they only kept legendaries. I used to have both the hand cannon and the scout, but at the time I deleted those, they weren't even close to as good as auto rifles. Because this is back in the day when the Shinjen C, the Shinjen E, the Galahad, and other auto rifles just dominated. Suros, Vanquisher, um, Shadow Price, all of those auto rifles were just so good. Hand cannons were okay, but they were nothing like the uh, two tap thorn or two tap last word. Prudence 2. Or, yeah, that's definitely a 2. <laughs> Forgive my Roman numeral knowledge. Anyway, this is a shitty rolled sniper, but I kept it because it is one of the best snipers in all of Destiny. It has insane aim assist, a crazy body shot time to kill if they run low armor, and I'm just gonna say it, it pretty much magnetizes to heads. I kinda got unlucky on the scopes, but some people like Longview and some people like Ambush. But if I had a Taxis or a Short Gaze, it would be money. So I run it with Long View and Custom Optics just to give it that Taxis feel. But I might switch it to Send It if I feel like shooting people through walls because I kid you not, it has that much aim assist. Hitchhiker I kept because it reminds me how unlucky I was when this gun was available to get. Because I wanted armor-piercing rounds, but I only got brace frame. 
and underdog it's kind of useless for this kind of fusion but I kept it because replenish plus, plus, plus where's my voice replenish plus braced frame uh, makes for a pretty consistent fusion rifle iron wreath D this is probably one of the best sidearms in the game for time to kill and usability hot swap makes the bullets feel like they're magnetic Reactive reload adds extra damage, and a high cal adds flinch. I can't ask for anything else in a sidearm. I don't know why my luck is so good with sidearms. You'll see a lot of them in this video. So I'll supercell, that's self-explanatory. 1-1 one, one Sinistate. Now, it's worth mentioning that finally, a year later, they release another scout rifle in this arc type. But the perks to this scout rifle are unique, and it's re-rollable. So I kind of went for a pseudo meta multi-tool, and opted for explosive rounds, because they flinch a bit more than high cows from what I've seen. This is my best Luna to date. It's probably going to get scrapped as soon as I get reactive reload in this tree. But for now, Grenadier, Rifled Barrel, Partial Refund, Sure Shot IS. I can't complain. It even has brace frame. So if they ever buff hand cannons, I'll be ready. Vacancy, I've talked ad nauseum about this gun. I mean, look at it. It's the vendor version, and it's pretty much perfect. Now, if I could only obtain a replenished version as well, but not lucky. Dark Blade Spite, this is the best one I've got to date. Has pretty much the minimum uh, things to be useful, aka rifle barrel range finder and a pretty decent sight. Now if I got knee pads in the box scope, oh my gosh, I would be in this boys. Like this would be the only gun I ever use. But onwards. Now the Laidmila, Laidmila D. Forgive the pronunciation. Class half full to make two taps more consistent. Counterbalance to make the recoil nice and hand laid stock because I don't think brace frame was an option. Um, I actually have another one of these in my inventory and I'm waiting for crowd control and counterbalance and probably hand laid stock again. So it's uh, right there. Alright, come on loading screen. Let's go. Gotta move on. Cirrus PDX, another gunsmith weapon and I also keep another one of those in my inventory so I could possibly get taken -y or high caliber rounds on this. But for the last, like, six weeks, the gunsmith has just been running dry on PDXs. Trials weapon, self-explanatory, but it runs double duty because you can run rangefinder or full auto, and that basically saves me two slots of vault space if I ever even thought of deleting this thing. Well, there we are. Crow's Eye, sidearm. It's an okay roll. I could have done a lot better right here and right here. But for now, it just looks cool, and that's pretty much why I kept it. I'll eventually get a better roll of this, so I will replace it when uh, that time comes. Blinding Blaze. Again, another one of those situations where I got too good of a sidearm to pass up. It has high cow and quick draw in the middle, so those are options. And then Zen Moment and Reactor Reload to pair with Hand Loaded. Pretty much the farthest range I could ever get on this Rate of Fire Impact. And... I don't know what any of these sites do. Long Far Gone. Again, this is one of the situations where this is just the best roll to this archetype that I could get. Requisite rifled barrel and rangefinder, but surrounded. I kind of rolled a one on the dice there. Like, no. Was terrible. <laughs> Knee pads, again, probably would be the best perk. Trials Fusion Rifle. It's actually pretty good, and it's one of the few fusion rifles with this scope that sees through stuff. So, for that reason alone, I say try to pick one of these up before you can't get them anymore. Bully and Gemini, self-explanatory. I have a year one icebreaker because I'm unlucky in the nightfall, but no big deal. I use a year one icebreaker in trials regardless because, I mean, a headshot still kills, I'm pretty sure. Thorn, self-explanatory. There's no difference from the year one version. First curse, self-explanatory. Ah, uh, here we go. Uh, kind of funny that it sits right next to the first curse, but this is the better version of the first curse. You didn't even have to get a uh, kill to make it good. Like, let's look at that range. It's already pretty damn high. Probably maxed out with send it. Then you have reactor reload, 
and outlaw for the most consistent two taps of your life. And I also have single point sling down there in case I ever in case they ever buff hand cannons. That's probably what I'm gonna run. Because I like strafe speed and switching weapons quicker. Plan C and Lord of Wolves. Self-explanatory. Oh, here is another treasure right here. Check this out. It's a Naraka SR5. Custom optics and private eye. Now tell me, have you ever seen a scout with custom optics and private eye and a ranged lens? Jesus Christ. Like, you combine all three of these and you can, you can look into a guy's future. Like, see their whole... Yeah, that bit wasn't funny, but I'll continue. Silomar's Wrath. Auto rifle. Reactive reload and crowd control and hammer forged but I've been running fitted stock for some reason, probably because I use this in close quarters and want to aim just slightly better. I'm probably never going to reroll that, but if you have one of these, I've heard that counterbalance and high caliber rounds and something like third eye is pretty damn good. Bad juju, pocket infinity, not going into. Give take equation on the other hand. Oh, this is a beauty. Knee pads replenish, brace frame, and accelerated coils and single point sling and a box scope. You really can't do better than this. I use this fusion a lot, especially in Rumble where special ammo is an issue. It doesn't do me wrong, it's very consistent. Dry Rot 32. I'm currently re-rolling this for full auto knee pads or something in that nature, but for now just know that it is basically... Oh, am I gonna have to go to the second page every time? Son of a bitch. But uh, for now, just know that it's basically a legendary invective, or even a shotgun that's slightly better than invective, despite being a legendary. Saladin's Vigil, I'm actually scared to hit Y now because I know I have to go two pages, but uh, we'll get through it together. Rangefinder Hot Swap, Quick Draw, Accelerated Coils is garbage, don't use it, Rifled Barrel, and Injection Mold. Um, this is pretty much what I want on a Saladin's Vigil, but I also want another one that has Replenish instead of Hot Swap. But I will swap to hot swap if it's a close range map. But for the most part, I run rifled or um, rangefinder. You know what I meant. Cryptic dragon, firefly, crowd control, and in the middle it has explosive rounds. We already know what this scout does, and I'm gonna compare it to another one later. In fact, I'm actually gonna delete its clone later, most likely, because it has will light, and we don't see that much taken enemies. Parthian shot. This one's worth looking at. Uh, this is definitely from this current iteration of Destiny. Mine has Rodeo, Handlaid Stock, and Counterbalance. Now, I kept this just in case um, this archetype ever gets buffed because this thing doesn't move. Like at all, as you can imagine. And Exile Student, another Trials weapon. Very solid, very fun to use, but more effective than a IS Luna or a Palindrome. Absolutely not. No, oh, that's armor, not weapons. My bad. Distant Star. Now, remember how I talked about the 1-1 uh, one, one Sinistate earlier? This is in the same archetype. Finally. Finally. It's the Mita multi -twim, um archetype. So, it does some work. I got Icarus, Full Auto, Small Bore, Hand Laid Stock, and a couple sites to choose from. Um, this is not the best roll. In fact, it's just sitting in my vault until I get a better roll. But for now, this is a 400 light and meet a multi-tool replacement if I ever want to use it in a leveled PvP like Iron Banner. Doctrine of Passing, this thing is a monster. If you've never heard of it, play Trials until you get one. This is legitimately the best auto rifle of this archetype simply because it has both counterbalance and persistence. At some point in Destiny history, people wanted this gun nerfed to hell. And they slightly nerfed counterbalance and then nerfed the damage to this gun when all I think that was needed for this archetype was just to remove counterbalance. Because then you would have had things like my Silomar's Wrath, the meat grinder, just chewing people up. Blind Perdition. Definitely, definitely, definitely get the Adept version. Snapshot plus High Cow kind of cancels out that um, handling bonus or handling negative. Counterbalance or Outlaw if you're doing PvE, then you got small bore or hand laid stock, as well as Ballistics on a Pulse Rifle. This is probably top 10 weapons in the game, I kid you not. 
Judith D. Everyone knows about my Judith D. Crowd control, reactive reload, reinforced barrel because rifled barrel doesn't exist, and uh, stability is for bitches. <laughs> like, if you can't handle your gun, uh, you might as well not use it. Sheer shot. Pretty solid gun all around. I use it all the time, even still today with my Telesto. No land beyond. All I'm going to say on that is run the hardest hitting ballistics because body shot damage does matter. Split Shifter Pro. This is the best I've ever gotten and probably the role I would have chose regardless. Replenish, rifled barrel, hip fire, and the box scope. And accelerated coils. And enhanced battery to synergize with replenish. Like, you cannot do better than the split shifter. No. Fuck, I did it again. Let's go. Come on, game, load. Queen Breaker's bow. Lovely Telesto. I'm surprised it's not actually sitting next to the Judith. I don't know what the vault organizers were thinking. Red Hand. Now, this is a gun that I haven't rerolled. I used to have it with, like, hit in hand, rifled barrel, and then something or another. But eventually, I just started rerolling it to uh, get hip fire and what's the other Icarus and explosive rounds that's what I'm going I call it a skate cannon because if you're a striker type or any kind of Titan you just skate and pull the trigger as you're flying by someone and it'll pretty much hit what you're aiming at which is fantastic for doing damage that you otherwise wouldn't have been able to do low down I'm not gonna say the rest of that but um persistence hip fire small bore you're probably wondering why I rolled it for these specific perks. Well, if you play Destiny a lot, you know when you aim down, uh, aim down sights, you move a little bit slower. Like, you can walk a lot slower. The only guns that uh, seem to not have this is Mita Multitool. But, for a gun like this with persistence and hip fire, you can just shoot from the hip and maintain your full strafe speed. As well as T-Vac strafe and do other evasive maneuvers to make up for this shitty archetype of auto rifle. Now, this used to be good. But for now, in the current iteration of Destiny, it is garbage. This is one of my first legendaries in the game. I cannot delete it even if I come across a better hand cannon. And frankly, I still have fun with it to this day. Quick draw IS because I didn't get sure shot, but it synergizes semi-well with single point sling whenever they uh, inevitably buff hand cannons. Reactive reload plus single point or send it and then hip fire. It's kind of like the last word, OG, if you uh, catch my drift. You just catch a reactive reload, then you aim from the hip and pop them twice in the face, or sometimes even one to the face, one to the body if they're low armor, and that'll do the job. It's a very fun weapon to use. I still use it to this day. Now, remember when I was talking about the um, burning eye over here? Well, this is its predecessor, or whatever comes before it. I'll look it up in the dictionary later. But Rodeo, Explosive Rounds, and Firefly. This is an all-time classic. And I kept this gun because I used it to troll my teammates more than I actually did using it to shoot things. Now what i do is i just fire explosive rounds at their face and body while they were trying to hard scope. Like, quit it, Cammy. God damn it. I'm trying to aim and play over here. But uh, yeah, I got a lot of laughs out of this. Now this is the famous LDR that I almost deleted in my other video. Back when I uh, deleted all my garbage weapons out of my vault. Everyone said to keep it. Since this archetype is nerfed, final round is actually pretty damn usable. Field scout is unobtainable on some sniper rifles now. And performance bonus, I mean, I could have got something better there, but you can't complain. Ambush scope, long view scope, and a sight sys scope that no one ever uses. <laughs> Felwinter's Lie, this thing is a beauty, but frankly, it's one of the weaker shotguns in the game now because Hammer Forged plus aggressive ballistics doesn't equal max range. So when you compare it to something like a Matador, you actually lose out on the impact, so therefore you lose out on its effective range. But I still kept it because Felwinters at one point in Destiny was the most hated gun in the game. Well, maybe second to a final round Ephrodite Spear, but we'll get to that later. Against all odds, take a knee, crowd control. Jesus Christ is this one to use. Because it's one of the slowest fire rates of machine guns. Yeah, someone should have died, you're right. God damn it, Tim. I'm filming a video. What? I'm doing a video. 
Okay. I'll be done in uh, 20 ish minutes. Alright. You want me to back out? Uh, yeah, go ahead. I'll catch up with you in like 20 minutes. Alright, for sure. See ya. And this is why you should be able to lock fire teams. Where was I? Oh, right. Because this is one of the lowest <laughs> rate of fire and impact, I'm gonna leave that in the video, by the way, because I just think it's funny. But a uh, rate of fire impact, one of the lowest possible. With Takeny, you could pretty much tap fire people down from distances that you should not be able to with the machine gun. As well as you don't experience as much flinch, so you don't get that weird year one situation where you'd roll around the corner sliding, shooting a last word user, and he'd just turn around and two-tap you in the face, because you would get flinched the fuck up, even though you had a faster time to kill. MG18A, Harm's Way. Skip Rounds, Grenadier, Range Finder, Smart Drift Control. Check that out. I kept it because it's a fun machine gun to use. I often use it with Angel of Light, and then I try to skip round people around the corner. Man, that's some alliteration there, but uh... It's solid, it does exactly what it's supposed to do as a machine gun, and you can't obtain it anymore. Therefore, it's going to gather dust in my vault until the random rumble generator decides I need to use it. This is pretty much my Iron Banner shotgun for dealing with shotgun warriors. Um, I can't run aggressive ballistics because I lose out on too much range, as well as smart drift control, but rifle barrel replenish and battle runner. Pretty much everything you want in an infinity ammo shotgun. <clears throat> I'm catching my voice here over here. Uh, Winged Word. I haven't leveled it up mostly because of the uh, scope, but from what I hear, this is one of the best sniper rifles you can get because the ballistic actually lets you kill supers. So you got unflinching, snapshot, and injection mode for that year one feel of a sniper rifle. Or if you don't value unflinching, life support could actually become life support in some situations. Matador 64. This is the best current year shotgun I've got to date. Actually, scratch that, I did get one better today, but not a Matador. I got a last ditch. Aggressive Ballistics, Rifle Barrel, Final Round, and Cascade. Pretty much, if you're a Stormcaller in Trials, you can be an asshole with this shotgun. Because what you do is you go Aggressive Ballistics, Rifle Barrel, and then you dump down to the final round of the magazine. It means you waste four shotgun bullets, pick up some special ammo crates, and then you have a shotgun with 33% more damage. You shoot them from a distance that's stupid, you melee them from a distance that's stupid, and then it automatically reloads one bullet, therefore making your final round infinite. Yeah, it's pretty broken. As well as final round is great for dealing with supers. Even if I get a better Matador, I might not replace it. Arminius D. This used to go hand in hand with the Doctrine of Passing. They were like brothers. This one had extra damage after a kill, and then the Doctrine was slightly better at aiming. Uh, not much to talk about on that weapon since I already talked about the Doctrine. Grasp and Malak. This is my best one to date. Glass Half Fool doesn't make that big of a difference, but it sometimes lets it punch out of its range class when you're trying to fight with a multi-tool or a Clever Dragon across the map. But for now, Clever Dragon beats it because Clever Dragon can get high cows down the middle and Grasp and Malak can't. Back in the day though, Glass Half Fool plus Headseeker was a pretty good option. Universal Remote. Love it. Not going to talk about it though. Hopscotch Pilgrim. This used to cause fear in people because even in the two tap thorn, two tap last word days, this could keep up. Um, I know the numbers are confusing here, but it used to be in the spare change archetype. Like it used to hit like a truck, and then they reduced it to the mid impact, uh, mid archetype of pulse rifles. So rangefinder, not rangefinder. Let me compose myself here. A lot of talking. Feeding Frenzy, high caliber rounds, reactive reload, and small bore in case I want that extra range. But high caliber rounds does the trick. This is a two tap to this day with reactive reload active. So basically what I'm saying is this is the only pulse rifle other than um, the all fate. Only pulse rifle in Destiny that's capable of a two tap in this archetype. Definitely keep it if you have it. Original Kvostov. I used to use this in year one rumble all the time. Try to shit on people who use last words and thorns. A lot of fun. Then they released the new version, but frankly, I don't even want the new version. The OG Kvostov's where it's at since the new one can't even compete. 
Look at this. Four bullets, one of them is a lucky round. This is the only gun in this archetype that can get this. Four bullets, one lucky round. Um, there is one in the Judith D95 to the head impact um, archetype. It's the, what is it? Iron Banner one. You could get Brace Frame and Feather Mag with Lucky Round and it brings it down to four. But I kept this because now that you can't even pick up Green Engrams as a max level, I'm never going to see this again. So it will never get deleted. Stranger's Rifle. Self-explanatory. I don't have to talk about that one. If you've ever done the Destiny campaign, you know what gun that is. Shadow Price. This is a great weapon. Even to this day, it's still great. Range Finder. Hammer Forged and Reactor Reload and Quick Draw if I want to snipe or Snapshot if I'm using something like Aphidian Aspects or Quick Draw. I have so many options with this gun, it will never get deleted. Where are we at? No, that's page three. What are you doing, Cammy? This is the Glock. I'm sure you've seen a couple clips of mine with it, but this is the best roll I've gotten on it so far. It's the only gun in Destiny that resembles something in real life. Look at that, hot swap, rangefinder. I might opt for reactor reload if I ever get one in the future because I love that perk, but for now, I can't complain. Xerxes C. Now I'm a little disappointed that I never got one of these with aggressive ballistics, but smart drift control, focus fire on the slowest rate of fire machine gun. So as you can imagine, on some armor builds, you can two tap them to the face with a machine gun. Now, interesting little piece of trivia here, the last word used to kill faster than this machine gun. Yeah, you're hearing that right. The last word killed faster than a freaking machine gun. Supremacy. You've probably been waiting for this one. I think I know a couple other content creators who still own one, but this is mine. Taxoscope, thank God. Take a knee. They nerfed this perk to the ground. I'm surprised I didn't rant about it on the machine gun. But basically... You may think it's a buff on paper, but what they did is they made it so you can't slide and shoot, which is basically what you want to do if you're going for snipe melees. Yeah, they made it so you can't do that. But I got snapshot, which kind of is useless with take a knee, but definitely necessary when I'm not using take a knee, and grenadier. It's a sniper that basically does sniper rifle things, so not much to talk about. Look at that. I think this is the best machine gun in the game. Easily the best machine gun in the game. Rate of fire and impact, counterbalance, field scout for extra ammo, and crowd control for mowing people down with the option of smart drift or field choke. Like, look at that option right there. I could do any of these three and be perfect. Or I could even pick up heavy, go hide somewhere, and switch to perfect balance and smart drift control and have this thing never move. Finally, on to page three. Hallelujah. Prestige. Um, I can't really say anything too positive about this, but it's one of the rarer guns in its archetype. Used to be a new monarchy gun on uh, year one. Smart Drift, Counterbalance, Field Scout, and Grenadier. I keep it on my Titan usually, but for this video I swap stuff around to just make sense. Oh, this is the first page. I was like, didn't I already talk about Saladin's Visual? BTRD 345. This is probably the second best um, machine gun in the game, mostly because it can't get field scout. But if you notice, you throw a brace frame plus anything here and it gets max stability plus crowd control. I opted for snapshot to have a machine gun with slightly faster handling than other machine guns, but this thing gets the job done. I will likely reroll it in the future for something. I don't know if you can get quick draw on it because quick draw might be better than snapshot in some situations. But uh, we'll see. We'll see. Pax Totalis. Grenades and horseshoes. Bigger blast radius. Tripod. Why is this a hilarious rocket launcher? Because the blast radius and rate of fire and velocity stats make it so that the rate of fire shoots this thing like a machine gun. It's basically like you dump three rockets on someone and laugh as they survive. Just a comical weapon to use. They do have weapons like it in year three, but nothing beats the Pax Totalis. Remember that green hand cannon I showed you with four bullets? This is its older brother, per se. 
luck in the chamber, five in the magazine, and send it. Back in year one, we didn't have anything that reduced the magazine, so this is the most range you can get for a one out of five chance in the magazine. You'll see a uh, loner rebel later that I can compare it to. Actually, I'll just skip ahead now. Look at that difference. Six in the magazine with some pretty decent range. Actually, it has a lot less range. But I think you could run like small bore on it and have seven. But for argument's sake, let's just say that this is the highest range hand candy you can get with a one out of five chance of two tapping or whatever it is. Chance hand cannon. One of the rarest guns I own, Future War Cult, vendor version year one, because I could never get the god roll. Now, just imagine the god roll here for a second. You go rifled barrel, luck in the chamber, and outlaw. If I had that, actually, I'm going to put it on the record now. If anyone owns the chance hand cannon with luck in the chamber and outlaw, or even just luck in the chamber and rifled barrel, those two perks, I will buy your account. Like, I am not fucking around. I will use this gun till the day I die. Where are we at? Badger CCL. Now, yes, they re-released this gun, but no, I'm probably not going to get a better roll. This was more of a PvE gun, but I kept it because it's fun to use in combined arms. Zen Moments, Send It, or Snapshot, and Firefly does everything you want in a scout rifle, and Firefly is actually useful because it's a max impact. Meaning, the Firefly is tied to the impact on a weapon, so it makes it likely that I'm going to be able to kill someone in one less bullet if they're standing near each other when a Firefly erupts. Now this gun, oh my god, so many people are rolling over in their graves now that I bring this up because you're probably never going to get it again. Um, the only way to get this is if you recreate a character, and then you do a mission. And at the end of the mission, this is a reward option. And you got to keep redoing accounts or waiting week to week to uh, have the opportunity to select this rule. Taxis scope, crowd control, max impact snipe. Basically what that means is after a kill, everything body shots. Now it has low handling, so you definitely want to use this with the fitting aspects or quick draw on the blade dancer. But I have no complaints, I mean... If I could get field scan on it, that would be great, but I usually pull it out in Mayhem because we're all trying to have a fun time in Mayhem. If I pull this out in Rumble, people get a little bit of salt, but more power to me because I kept my weapons. Everyone laughing at me like, Cammy, why don't you just delete weapons? Uh, this is why I don't delete weapons right here. Good luck getting that. Perun's Fire. This used to be my favorite fusion rifle in the game, but after copious amounts of nerf, it just doesn't do enough damage to hang with the big boys. My roll actually used to be different. I re-rolled this to be used in year 3. Hammer Forge, life support. Keep in mind, this is the OG life support. This doesn't recover your health. This gives you more ammo. So basically, as long as I win my engagements, I have infinity ammo. This, this is another weapon that makes people roll in their grave. You're not going to get another hand cannon like this. Luck in the chamber, final round, and rifled barrel. It's the two-tap king. It's basically my replacement for last word or my whale, which I can talk about in a second, whenever I run quick draw gauntlets or blade dancer. Vanquisher. Solid auto rifle. Kept it because it could compete with Suros back in the day. Glass half full doesn't really do anything. I would much rather um, have a different perk, but I've actually seen an auto rifle way back in year one. It was a glitch gun. The guy confirmed it worked. But it had two crowd controls. It had crowd control and crowd control, and he said they stacked. It's another account I would pay for if auto rifles were good. The Whale. This is probably one of my best primaries of year three. Quick draw, small bore because you can't get rifled barrel, and luck in the chamber. But let's be real. Small bore is actually better than rifle barrel here because it makes it a one out of six instead of a one out of seven chance for luck in the chamber to proc. And I have Outlaw in case I ever want to use this in PvE. But uh, secret is I don't ever use it in PvE. Oh, I just looked at my recorder right now. I was making sure that the commentary button was clicked. Because if it wasn't, I was about to jump off a bridge. <laughs> Clever Dragon, this is the vendor version. Because I did like easily 70-80 games of Iron Banner. And did not get one with counterbalance and high caliber rounds. Actually, I didn't even care about counterbalance. I just wanted brace frame and high caliber rounds. But I didn't even get that. 
palindrome vendor version, you know all about it. You can just go to the vendor and look at it if you want to see it. Last word, meet a multi-tool, not going to talk about, the year one matador. Now these are banned in tournaments for obvious reasons, and I feel so bad for people who don't own a gun like this, because if you don't own a replenished knee pad shotgun, or just a replenished shotgun with max impact, you are so far behind in Rumble, because you basically have infinity ammo as long as you're using your shotgun intelligently. I have no complaints over that weapon, it's probably one of the top 10 in the game. Now I know I said that a lot, so that probably means that I have to make a top 10 list at some point, and I own a lot of the guns to do so. Party Crasher. I kept this for when I used the Felwinter's artifact, because Grave, Grave Robber is a perk that you can't get anymore. Melee kills with this weapon, when it's equipped have a chance to refill the magazine. So as you can imagine, combination of knee pads and Felwinter's artifact, if I do something like punch someone with the storm melee or shoulder charge them while this gun's out, even if I have zero bullets in the magazine, there's a chance that it will give me bullets. Now way back in the day there was a glitch where you could throw like a spike grenade, a lightning grenade, a trip mine, a swarm grenade, any kind of grenade and then just punch it and it would give you shotgun ammo. Think about that for a second. If you had no shotgun ammo, you'd throw a spike grenade on the wall and then punch it and you could get shotgun ammo. That's insane. This was an infamous gun in Destiny because back in the day people used to roll it for final round armor piercing and one shot people in the body through walls. I have mine with field scout and snapshot most important two perks on a spear with double down which means if I spawn into a rumble match I have 24 bullets as well as mulligan in case I miss a shot returns a bullet to the uh, magazine. This is one of the best fusion rifles that I've got in this DLC. I could have got a better roll, but for now it's one of the most I use because it has armor piercing and brace frame. So armor piercing if I'm in PvE, brace frame if I'm in PvP, replenish because I always have ammo problems with fusions, and hip fire. I could definitely get a better fusion, but my luck has been terrible. Anton's rule, the Glock 18. Reactive reload, high caliber rounds, and crowd control. This gun isn't for using effectively in Crucible. It's for embarrassing people. If you get a kill with it, you gotta empty the whole magazine in the air. Like, it's it's hilarious. People think you have a modded controller when you use that gun. I'm so happy I got this Event Horizon. Unflinching quick draw and the, ch and the option between Mulligan and Underdog. It does everything I need for a sniper to do in year 3. AKA, it kills supers in the face, and it's a sniper rifle with quick draw and unflinching. No complaints from me. Radagast Fury. I'm not going to look at this gun because in the middle it has Field Scout, I think, and you can't really... No, you can get Field Scout on, my sh on um, rocket launchers now, so what am I saying? But uh, back in the day, this used to be a really infamous gun because you could have essentially infinity ammo if you were lucky with your rockets. So you'd shoot a rocket because it has one in the magazine, you reload, clown cartridge activates. I've heard good things about the raid rocket launcher as a possible replacement for this. But for now, I keep this around for mayhem since uh, heavy ammo drops on the floor. Last ditch. This is my improvement to the Matador. And it scares me to think that I could have got an even better roll. Crowd control. I could have got rangefinder or close and personal in there. I much would have rather had a close and personal, but I'm not going to complain with crowd control. Knee pads or hammer forge for a slight range boost. Hand loaded, that's the best thing you can get in that slot, and I could have got quick draw. Which means, had I rolled ideally with what I wanted, I could have had close and personal, knee pads, and quick draw on a high impact shotgun. So basically, that would turn my shotgun into a panic weapon, where knee pads works with my primary to just make me a little more evasive. That's my gone gun right there. I'm not willing to buy an account since I can still obtain a last ditch with that. But, like, I, I could be persuaded. Dreg's Promise, not going to talk about. Ash Factory, I got Field Scout and Tripod and Grenades and Horseshoes. It's the best rocket launcher you can get in a year three, hands down. You don't have to worry about rocket boots. You still get three rockets per heavy ammo crate. It's amazing. It will. Now, I do have a better version of this in my Postmaster, unless it got deleted. But for now, it will. Braced Frame. Luck in the chamber, final round, and I never rolled this for sure shot IS. 
it's one of those one-shot hand cannons, as uh, people gotta know with my voice. Loner Rebel, I already talked about. Monte Carlo. Frenzy. Look at this. Back in the day with Perun's Fire, this used to compete. Knee pads, hip fire, brace frame, box scope. Incredible fusion rifle, though now the archetype is very weak. It's my space crew blaster, just because of its uh, green tint. Looks like a space age weapon, if you ask me. Outlaw, quick draw, reactive reload. If I got feeding frenzy there, this would easily stay in my vault. But at some point, I'm going to delete it when I get a better one. Um, let me think. There definitely was a sidearm called the Vestian Dynasty that I deleted, just because this was significantly better than Vestian Dynasty. And it was basically the exact same gun model, as well as you can obtain Vestian Dynasty anytime you want by talking to the vendor. So yeah, that's what I'll do. Panterai. Ray. Whatever you say. This is the vendor version. It is solid. No complaints, though the archetype isn't the best. But because it has knee pads and a uh, year 2 slash 3 fusion rifle, I use it a lot. Trespasser. Deviant Gravity. A. Now I heard somewhere that this might have been Deej's favorite gun. I can see why. 4 tap to the face or 4 tap to the body. Feeding Frenzy, Field Scout, and a list of options for the ballistics. I can't complain. Amazing. Amazing machine gun. I still use it to this day. Summoner Adepts in there because it used to be one of those weapons that had a uh, element attached to it. And it's on level just to show that I'm an OG. I played Trials back then. And I kept it for the one day that they might buff this gun. Ephrodite Spear. This is my everyday driver sniper right here. If I'm using a Blade Dancer or Ophidian Aspect Warlock, this is the best sniper in the game to me. You cannot convince me otherwise. Nemesis Star. Okay, I didn't even have to go back in there. I'm going to briefly go over armor before I look at my Postmaster and my other characters. But uh, you can see I have some things from year one. Like, look at that. Those are some Trials Gauntlets. Look at that. They look so fresh. You can see I have year one helmets in here. Look at that. I'm going to stop repeating that word. Uh, Ghost Angel. Hood of the Exile. Helm of the Exile. What else we got? Some Prison of Elder stuff in here. Some easily week one helmets. Like this might have been my, one of my first legendaries in the game. Auto rifles. Um, There should be one more helmet worth talking about. If not, it's in my inventory. Alright, so that pretty much sums up my vault. We can take a look at my general tab if you're curious. OG. I don't have that many strange coins because I spent them all on exotic shards and coins and stuff. And we're finally into my inventory. Let's go look at that helmet first. Yeah, there it is. Look at that. You can't do better than that for sweats. That's exactly what you want. Let me put this back on. These are all my trials weapons. We know about them. Scholar. Again, one of the top 10 weapons in the game because you cannot get this combination of perks on a scout rifle and its max impact, which makes it amazing. Messenger used to be something that scared the shit out of people when pulse rifles were good. I mean, it even gave the Hopscotch Pilgrim metal, uh, meta a run for its money. Jewel of Osiris, no complaints there. Very solid hand cannon. Water Star, Reflection Sum. Inward Lamp, Still Piercer, Exile's Curse, Eye of Soul, Elevating Vision, Astral Horizon. I still use this shotgun to this day because of Replenish. Glass Promontory. This one's definitely worth talking about because Perfectionist plus Performance Bonus. That means if you were the best sniper in the game, you have Infinity Ammo. Black Spindle, Binary Dawn. Um, the reason that I mentioned Astral Horizon earlier is because look at this. It doesn't have a single range thing in the middle, yet its range is very high for a shotgun of that archetype. So, basically, I'm not going to go back to it again. It's a shotgun that gives you single point sling for free. Unseeing Eye, other exotics in there. Tomorrow's Answer was amazing because of Tripod. Infinite Theorem used to be my rumble machine gun because of spray and play. 
back when a heavy ammo could drop on the floor, and Tamarind. It's uh, named after a Mexican candy that I enjoy. That's pretty much all I'm going to say on that. Let's go look at my Postmaster, then we're going to jump on my other two characters, look at their inventories, and then we're done. You don't have to listen to my annoying ass voice anymore. Remember I said I had a better spare change? Well, this one might be it. Counterbalance, Brace Frame, Grenadier. I'm going to keep that in my Postmaster as long as possible. That's a garbage weapon. Yeah. That's probably getting deleted right now. I could use the marks. Could also use like some throat spray or a nice hot cup of tea or something. Talking for fucking 45 minutes gets a little bit annoying. I think this is the best, maybe the second best ill will you can get. Sure shot, range finder, reinforced, hammer forged, and rifled. I think hammer forged does the max range, so if I got like a quick draw or a small bore or something down here, that would have been excellent. But again. This is probably the best hand cannon in this archetype because the range is going to hit and it's going to have a good chance to two tap. Speeder boots, just in case I need 400, and fuse fodder. Angel's advocate, this is another meta multi tool archetype. Firefly, I'm not too fond of. Small bore and hammer forge, I'm not too fond of. Life support, I'm not too fond of. And who's next, I'm not too fond of. But I kept it in my vault in case I need some infuse fodder. Distant star, exact same thing as Angel's advocate. This one I kept on the other hand because I'm genuinely interested to see how Icarus, Explosive Rounds, and I guess Brace Frame interact in the air. If this is as accurate as a hand cannon in the air because of Explosive and Icarus, I might use this over, like, let's say a Palindrome when I'm playing uh, competitive matches. May your day be clear. Okay, so let's quickly go because I don't want to waste your time. And Tim joined wanting to play Trials, so I'm definitely going to do that. Yeah, I get a lot of messages about trials, by the way. Okay, uh, let's go to Titan first. I'll save the Warlock for last. I don't know why I clicked Set Destination. We're going to quickly look at the armor. Alright, nice. Great armor, Cammy. Now, if you notice, this is all the Crota's end gear. I'm thinking of deleting this for vault space, but then again, when am I ever going to get an auto rifle that uh, disrupts witches or wizards or whatever they are? Like, I can't see this being useful, but on the other hand, I can't see myself deleting it because I spent so much time to attain all these weapons. But I might have to if Bungie never increases the vault space. Fangover Ute, this is never getting deleted because it's one of the few, um, I would say, PvE guns that actually makes a difference when you're playing six mans because it marks targets, which means that back in the day when armor-piercing rounds were a thing, I would just tag someone in the body with this and they would think they're slick, like hiding behind a rock or something. Then you switch to Ephrodite Spear and end their career. Judith D, this is arguably the better version of my Judith D. But I've used it a bit, and I'm not too impressed. I'm waiting for crowd control, feeding frenzy, and explosive rounds to show up in the gunsmith for PvE reasons. And then maybe that one will get deleted. I remember earlier I told you about a cryptic dragon with crowd control and firefly. This one has will light, which is great for taking enemies. This one might get deleted very soon to open up a single vault space. Black hammer, light of the abyss. This used to be good, but got nerfed. Swordbreaker, that's definitely potential for a gun that I'm going to delete because look at this this offers nothing other than some cool aesthetics I have so many other shotguns in my vault basically is what I'm saying that do this gun better than that gun this gun probably won't get deleted because of its PVE utility aka if I put the uh, gun away it'll reload back in six back into the magazine and with close and personal it kind of synergizes nice with a flame shield warlock or something of that nature Midas Reckoning, I think I could have got a better perk in the middle, but I'm not going to argue with Hipfire. Hipfire is a great perk. Defiance of Yasmin, again, this is one of those PvE guns. But now that I think about it, Perfectionist doesn't synergize too well with Cocoon, because if you're trying to get like two headshots and you have to switch to a primary then back to this, it might end up reloading and ruining your Perfectionist chain. But again, Perfectionist is one of those perks that I love 
on snipers mostly because I'm a perfectionist. I will go for body shots if it's like a sweaty match or competitive or something. But for the most part, I'm looking to get a clip. Perfectionist looks sick on a clip. Thousand yard stare. This might get deleted very, very, very soon since I have a sniper to replace it. You know what? Fuck it. In fact, see you later, thousand yard stare. No, I'm kidding. I'll delete it after this video. Murmur. Knee pads on a stock fusion rifle. And it saves two vault spaces by acting as two archetypes. Solar or arc. It's amazing. Fell Winter's Lie. Again, crowd control, hammer forged. I could probably delete this, but I'm not going to. In case they ever adjust perks in the future, I want to be able to quickly reroll and experiment for you guys. Yeah, I think I covered all that. Hunger Crota, Song of Her Ute. Song of Her Ute is definitely like one of the guns I might consider deleting because it doesn't do anything too special outside of uh, PvE. But then again, it makes for a hilarious gun to have to roll for the random rumble generator. So I might keep it. Look at that. I'm surprised I didn't put this version in my vault. It's a fucking machine gun with reactive reload. You're probably asking how you even can reload quick enough. I specifically asked for flared magwell in this. Look at that. Flared Magwell, Field Scout, you grab it, switch to Flared Magwell, then you have the reload speed with something like um, Ruin Wings, or not Ruin Wings, whatever reloads machine guns quicker. If you have all that together, you can turn this into a two-tap, one to the head, one to the body, and I'm pretty sure it kills. Radagast Fury, that's the Infinity Ammo tracking version. Klim's Terminus, great PvE gun. Frenzy, great PvE gun. These I have nothing to say about. And on to the Warlock. We're almost done. The home stretch. You probably already know what's on this Warlock, but again, some of you are new to Destiny, so I'll continue soldiering on. My voice will die. Talok. Vision of Confluence, Fatebringer, a lot of people lost their lives in Vault of Glass for this gun. Praetis Timepiece, Atheon's Epilogue, Vex Mythoclass used to be historically one of the most powerful, if not the most powerful gun in the game. Hawkmoon, Hard Light, no time to explain. Ha ha. Susanu, Praetis Revenge, Praetorium Foil, the best fusion in the game because it has Reactor Reload and Glass Half Full with Send It. Making it punch way the hell out of its weight class. Shadow of Veils, I used to think had armor piercing because I would get shot through walls with it. Later, I found out it's my connection, but I keep this solely so I remember the fact that uh, Shankburn, Vandalburn, and other things like that were perks on weapons. What the hell? Found Verdict, a lot of exotics. Dreadfang, I use over the Void one just because it looks cooler, in my opinion. Hazen's Vengeance, correct a measure. This used to be the year one rumble. Uh, machine gun of choice because it had field scout surplus didn't do anything back then but it does now hothead radagast fury look at that i forgot which friend told me about it, it might have been blunt o'clock but uh clown cartridge field scout and tripod you could do some hilarious stuff like at four rockets in a magazine at some point in destiny it was a lot better to use this rocket than the single magazine one with clown cartridge because you would get more per heavy ammo crate. You wouldn't have to rely on chance as much. Deluvian, this is like that low down payload gun or whatever I showed you, the auto rifle, but the machine gun version. Hip fire, brace frame, persistence. You have full straight speed while aiming with the machine gun. Well, not while aiming, while hip firing. Yolder's hammer, this is specifically made from our warlock to recover grenades. And a quick look at the armor. And we're done. Damn. I have a lot of stuff. I'm gonna go see a psychiatrist about my hoarding problem. I will talk to you guys later. Thank you so much for watching. <laughs>